What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Matt Brill, here to tell you guys about my friends from Big Friendly Productions. Now, they specialize in creating merchandise for bands, artists, and even lifestyle brands. With their in-house equipment, they can provide shirts, branded hats, and more, as well as some graphic design services. They offer order fulfillment to handle your online orders and ship your merch straight to your fans from their shop. Down in good old Birmingham, Alabama, baby. Now, whether you are getting your first shirt, you're just starting out, or you're going on a 40 show run, Run, hit them up for all your merchandising needs. Check out their website, bigfriendlyproductions.com, or shoot them an email, merchandising at bigfriendlyproductions.com. Now we're going to get into the episode. This is Outside the Round with Matt Brill. Also, make sure you guys like, rate, subscribe, tell your mama and them. And for more details and uh, to get in touch with the rest of the familia, visit raiserowdy.com. Now let's get into it. Outside the Round with me, Matt Brill, a Raised Rowdy podcast. This is Outside the Round with Matt Burrill for Rage Rally Podcast. Well, my dude, how the hell are you doing? Wyatt Flores, um, this is a cool full circle moment because I remember meeting you in your hometown, Stillwater, Oklahoma, one of my favorite venues in the country, Tumbleweed. And I remember you opening like... Um, I remember Carrie, I was, I was TMing for Trey <laughs> at the time, bro. And I remember Carrie being like, Hey, we got this kid. His name's Wyatt. And then local kid hasn't played much, but we're going to throw him on. I think he's going to be the, the next one out of Oklahoma. <laughs> and you got up there and you, I was like, this kid's pretty good. And now you're fucking <laughs> doing the damn thing, my dude. So how the fuck you been? Things are good. Uh, things have been amazing. <laughs> Just absolutely a ball. Where have you been the past, like, the, this last weekend? Were you on the road this past weekend? Uh, this last weekend, I decided to take a fun little trip and just hop in the van and go watch my buddy Andrew Sevener play some shows. And, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, just acted like his manager over the weekend. So what, what were you, what, what is manager Wyatt Flores like? Like, what were you kind of oh, doing? Oh, man, I love it. I'm like, uh, the band needs more beer, more beer, and more beer. <laughs> and you're the one drinking the beer. <laughs> yeah, the more yeah. beers are for management. Yeah, yeah that third <laughs> more beer is for me. <laughs> that's, your, that's your 10% right oh, there. Yeah. 10, per, 10% of all beer. Provide 10% of the rider. That's, that's yeah, the manager much. Wyatt Flores. Money, uh, don't where need was, that. Where were the shows at? Uh, the shows were all in Burles, Burleson and Alvarado, Texas. Okay, sweet. So how long of a drive is that to go out there and see a buddy play? Uh, ten hours. But okay. I was with the band. So Oh, so you went you just rode out with them and stuff. Yeah, so we share bands and uh Oh cool. And, and so I just hopped in the back seat and I was like, I don't have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what like this this weekend coming up. So i I used to be on the road with Trey and that's how you and I met. I haven't been out in the road because I've been doing this raised rowdy thing and outside the round and all that, but I'm going out with Trey next week. And it's gonna be weird to be out out on the road and not be a merch guy or a tour manager. Like I'm so looking forward to it. Just sit back, not have to worry about as much shit. Do you think that you can like take your hat off of playing I, those roles? That's that's gonna be interesting to see because Trey's got a really good a really good tour manager that um that came in when I when I left out Josiah who's like very with it and very very organized and stuff. But it's gonna be, and and the band's a little bit different now than it was than it was when I was with him. So because um, they they made some changes, but it's but I'm I'm interested to see what it's gonna be like to be on. And we're on a bus, so I'm like now I don't have to worry about the bus driver, which Danny, <laughs> the, the bus driver that that Trey had, um, his name's Danny, he's from Arkansas. He's about five foot five, two hundred and seventy pounds. Seventy, well, ain't that something? Yeah, yeah. Said, he always goes, "Well, ain't that something?" And he's <laughs> this little chubby dude from Arkansas. You can, I, can, I can barely understand the word he says because he's so country. Oh no, kidding! And he show, talks about his grandkids and his great grandkids. One of the things I did for him was I made him a Spotify playlist, and I downloaded Spotify on his on his um, Android phone. And since I've left, apparently he hasn't had Spotify going, and the radio doesn't work. So he's just driving a bus with no sound. Like not even a podcast playing nothing. Nothing. He doesn't know how to work audio. So I'm look. That'll probably be my one big job. I mean, I'm going to be getting some like content, like interviewing fans and like doing shit like that. But one of my big roles, I think, is going to be to make sure Danny has some music to listen to. Yeah, no and kidding. I'm going to put Wyatt Floors right at the top well, of the thank list. Thank you. I'm going to put Losing <laughs> Sleep right at the top, and he's going to be rocking along and shit. That He'll be like next to uh, Booty, Booty Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you heard it. You ever heard Booty Man by Tim Wilson? 
I don't believe so. So it's like it's a funny it's a funny song. It's just it's just um, you you hear a lot of different songs being especially like being at being out with Trey. We heard all kinds of like funny random shit, <laughs> and Booty Man was one of them. It's amazing how many times that guy can. I'm actually gonna play it right. I'm, I'm popping on it. <laughs> how long have you been in Nashville now? You've been here uh, what a year and a half. It's coming up on a year right now. I mean, I was it's, coming back and forth for about six months. Uh, Starting in 2021, yeah, of October, and then finally made the move here in June. Because we met spring of 21. I want to say it yeah. was spring because it was before Calf Fry. Yes. So I remember them talking about Calf Fry and, and Carrie showing us around and stuff. So that had to be like March or oh, no, April. It was April 1st. I don't know how, well, how I re- I could be wrong, was, but I'm pretty was sure that, it's Was April that one 1st. of your first times playing Tumbleweed? That or? was my first time playing Tumbleweed, and then two weeks later, Traveling Kid came out, and that same night was my first time playing full band at Tumbleweed. So it was... Dude. Yeah, it it was wild. I was freaking out. And it's like, what are the odds that, that we happen to be out there for that? Like, of all the shows you could have opened for, it happens to be to be us. And that was one of the first shows that they had done coming out of COVID, which yeah. is really cool, too. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget coming up to you and meeting you at the merch stand. And then you were asking me all sorts of questions about, like, how many songs I got. And I was like, well, I got one. And then I'm working on, like, another. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the Turnpike songs. I yeah, can play I can play Turnpike all day long. <laughs> Cover band, for sure. What? Where were your gigs at before that? Like, what kind of... Uh, was it, like, the, the Mexican restaurant scene? Do you guys have that? Like, what's, what's the up-and-coming I mean, scene in... Like, where do you start playing music in Oklahoma? Because, like, in the South, it's, like, barbecue joints and Mexican restaurants, and I, I came up singing in church. I don't know what it's yeah, like in Oklahoma. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of people, you know, the whole ch- church scene. Yes. But, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, you can go play the restaurants and everything like that. For me, I kind of got in uh, with a, another buddy of mine, Wyatt Baker, who's putting out music just now, if you get the chance to listen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I was in his band, like, in college, which was only one semester, I was playing bass for him and then opening up for 45 minutes. And we played all over northeast Oklahoma, so the Tulsa area very heavily, and then wherever we could get other gigs, but it was mostly up in that area. And then as soon as that band kind of broke up and I went solo after I dropped out of college, I just had so many connections working through there. And then people would reach out and You'd play little tiny bars. I mean, I wasn't supposed to be in there at all. I, real bad. I didn't <laughs> sign a lot of affidavits. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you just keep playing, and, and you just got to be good at networking, and it's a real tough scene sometimes because Oklahomans, it's not that they don't care, but you really have to win them over for them to show any sign of like, oh, yeah, this kid's good. Or they have to be really drunk, and then they'll tell you how they feel. But, like, other places I've watched, like Kentucky and, and, and been up to some of those festivals, and, and they are there for the music. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's just different how things work. you got to really work the crowd to try and get something. Yeah, that was something I first saw when I, when I first started going out to Texas uh, back when I was working with the Musket on Bloodline guys. That was my introduction to Texas. And I remember going into a dance hall for the first time and being like, why aren't people in front of the stage? And then the man, then the band starts and then they all oh, move yeah. out there in pairs and they're twirling around. I'm like, Oh, it's really a dance hall. It's yeah, not, oh, yeah. it's, it's not the, the, like the rock show <laughs> vibe where it's, where it's people rushing in, getting to the front of the stage kind of vibe, yeah. which was, which is something that a lot of, a lot of folks coming out of the, the East coast or, or the Southeast it's just such a different vibe for us when we go out there. It's intimidating because it's like, how do you win these people over? Because they're there to dance. Yeah, they're I there mean, to dance. they don't care who's playing. They're there yeah. to dance. Which was always a, a struggle for me because my my songs are not really so much two step. You know, yeah. they're, they're I'm here to spread a message, I guess. And it's yeah. like I don't know what you want me to do. I, I don't have any dancing songs. But, but there's <laughs> but I feel like right now is the time when that that. In Red Dirt, it's, I mean, you look back to, like, the godfathers of, like, of cross-Canadian ragweed yeah. and, and that style and how it's how it's been spread down to, to guys like Co Wetzel, to guys like, um, guys like Zach Bryan, to, to what you're doing right yeah. now. Like, there is this, this style where it's, 
it's, hey, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the lower mid, I'm from red dirt country, but I don't want to dance. I don't want to wear a cowboy hat. I want to fucking, I want to rock and I want to sing about some real shit that yeah. people are going to relate to from where I'm from. And, and I can't believe that it's actually working because I was scared. I was like, these people are going to hate this because it's slow or they're not, you know, it's, it's a different kind of style. I have so many styles and none of them stay the same, but that's why losing sleep works so heavily in that market is because it's like, you know, the Alabama cross Canadian ragweed kind of rock and roll and, and the story is good, but they're there for the course. They love it. But everything else is kind of like, I don't know if I like this quite yet, but also it's not out yet. So that could be it. But it's a, uh, it's a, it's really crazy how things are way different in different areas. Like that's been the weirdest thing for me because Oklahoma, that's all I ever knew. And then you step outside and it's like, Oh, people actually like this other style of music in different areas. Yeah. And, and it, it's, I don't know. It's just weird the way the landscape the, works the out. The amount. Now, who's your who's your agency for for booking? So for booking, it's uh, CAA. Oh fuck yeah, that's where Trey's at too. We got a oh, lot. Of, we got yeah. a lot. We got a lot of good friends over there. Um, but they have had you in all corners of the country. Like I've just from from following on. I remember you first moving to town. I remember seeing you doing those showcase shows at the basement. I remember you popping by Live Oak and doing some of those some of those pickle jar shows and doing doing some rounds or just kind of like hanging out and networking. And then it seemed like all of a sudden you were just oh shit, why it's in California? Oh yeah. shit, oh yeah, why why it's in Seattle? Oh Dude. shit, he's in he's in Michigan. Oh he's he's in New York City. I'm like, damn. They're, they're sending you all over the place. So you've gotten to see most of the country now at such a young age and so early into your musical journey. What's that all kind of been like, aside from you realizing that there are different things than, than the Oklahoma Red Dirt scene? It has been absolutely wild. I thought I was going to hate New York City, and uh, it's by far my favorite place. Let's go. Yeah. As no, a New Yorker, <laughs> let's go. Uh, L.A. Was, uh, was kind of like a, whoa. <laughs> but, yeah, from – from you know trying to do something and then all of a sudden the next thing you know it's like hey we leave for new york tomorrow and it was like what and then two weeks later we're in la and then i, I don't even know florida and everywhere else it's that's all i've ever wanted to do but but to be able to say that you can do that it, it's it's uh it's still like unreal for me like it, it's scary it's like scary because i don't yeah. even want to look at master tour because i'm like Oh man, we're fixing to go see the countryside, boys, and it's like dreams are actually coming true, and it's it's, I don't know, it's heartwarming, but at the same time, it's like, how how did we go from zero to a hundred so fast? Yeah, dude, and that's the, to me the power of the internet. And talking about New York City, what what makes New York your one of your favorite places? Ah, uh, people watching is fun. Oh, dude, it's, yes. Like, I haven't had the full opportunity to sit down people watch from a window and just write songs, like come up with stories for people. Like that's my next thing when I go out to New York is that that's all I'm going to do for a full day. Bro, you got to go and sit in, um, outside near NYU. And I think, I think it's Bryant park or like there, there's like central, there's all the different parks there. Yeah. You got to just sit on a bench and just observe what is going on around you in New York City. Because you will see all walks of life. Literally every culture in the world is represented on that 13-mile island. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's it's so chaotic. Did you get some some good food when you were up there? I figured oh, yeah. they fed you well. Oh, yeah. Plenty of great places to eat. I don't really know the names of them because they get really creative with their names. And... Well, yeah, because it's different cultures. It's, oh, yeah. not, it's not John Smith's barbecue joint. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Ariba Derchi something. And yeah. then you've got like Jamaican food and, and Indian food and Asian. Like we have different sections of the. And what's crazy is that the city is only like 11 or 13 miles. It doesn't make and any sense. And there's 9.8 9 million people along those, those that little stretch of islands. Whereas like... 13 miles in Oklahoma is nothing like that. Yeah. That's like some people's closest neighbors. <laughs> so it's like for you to be in there, did you get some pizza and shit? Oh, and like yeah. Bagels. And I, I don't think I've had a bagel there yet. I, I keep missing out on things to do. So that way I have a reason to go back. But, uh, yeah. Well, I feel like your music is going to be the reason you go back because people want to see you. Now, did, was that just meetings and stuff you were up there for? Or was that, yeah. or was that a show? So, uh, well, Anytime that I'm going somewhere, I always like to just play some random spot and go TikTok live. Or well, well, did you did you play in New York? Like, did you play a show in New York, or was it was nah. it for meetings, or what were you doing out uh, there? I was out there for uh, for label meetings. 
Okay. So went out there for label meetings in L.A. and then San Francisco. And, uh, yeah, I, I still had a ball just seeing everything. But we did play uh, live at Times Square, and then some kid just showed up. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to ask me to play something like, I don't know, Luke Combs or Morgan Wallen. And, and then he's like, hey, uh, can I make a request? And I was like, go for it, man. And he goes, losing sleep? And I just about <laughs> lost it. I was like, there's no way someone's out here from New York City listening to me. And he just hopped in a cab and then met us in Times Square. It was the wildest thing ever. It looks staged. Yeah, but that's that's how it works, man. Yeah. That's how that's how it works. Is it weird being you come from Oklahoma, you move to Nashville, and then it's like label meetings, but instead of going to 16th Ave, they're sending you all over the country. Yeah, it's it's weird. It was like, oh yeah, this is normal. You know, I know Music Row. We can go down there, and then they're like, oh yeah, we're also going to New York. And I was like, what? What was San Francisco like? Because I've heard that San Fran is its own. It's just a wild. There's just Northern California is a weird place right now. Uh, there's good people up there, but it's just the, it just seems like it's just not, not the vibe right now. Well, it, it, uh, it was an eye opener. It was a, uh, you know, the tenderloin ended up having an Uber drive straight through that. And I don't know if you know what the tenderloin is. No, I've, I smoked a cigar that's referred to as a pork tenderloin tattoo. <laughs> cigar last night that was in, that's in like, like butcher paper, but I've never, <laughs> like I've, 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 I've had plenty of, of, Pork tenderloins or beef tenderloins, but what's what's the the tenderloin is not very tender. It's actually the sketchiest part of the city, and the Uber ended up taking it straight through it. And I've never seen like people just doing drugs on the sidewalks and just passed out. Just it's just an awful area, and it's sad to see it. And then we get back to the hotel and we disperse. I had Braden and Tyler, which are my managers. Yeah, they uh. We all split off, and then I get a phone call five minutes into being in my hotel room, and he go, my manager goes, are you in or are you out? And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And he goes, are you in or are you out? And I was like, I guess I'm in. And he goes, all right, come to my room right now. I need your help. Someone's trying to jump off the roof from the other side. And it, I was like, you got to be kidding me right now. And he goes, no, not at all. And then come to his room. He's already had time to go downstairs, ask the uh, – you know, the front desk lady, hey, I need to figure out what building that is. Can you tell me what it is? Because someone's trying to jump right now, and they just don't care. Then he goes out to where the valet is, and they wouldn't help him either. Wow. Like, it's so casual over there. Like, no one cares. And uh, go back up to the hotel room, and and he had finally figured out what building it was. He called the cops, and it took them forever to get over there. But when they did, they blocked off the street, and it was a guy that would keep running up the stairs of the building, and the girl would keep trying to pull him back. She'd tackle him, pull him back down the stairs, and then it was sad to watch because they were hitting each other. Yeah. Like full-on fist punching, and then yeah, it's just... they'd be screaming. And, and, and finally, we waited forever, and it was getting to the point where it was like, this guy's getting closer and closer to making it up those stairs. And then you see all the flashlights come up on the other side of the building and it's the cops and the fire department. And yeah, I, I don't know. It was, what do you think it is? Is it, is it drugs? Is it just, is it just an area that's kind of just lost its way? I mean, I think, uh, I think there's no sympathy, you know, no one, no one has time to feel bad about other people's problems out there is, is what I felt like it yeah. was. It, uh, I mean, it could have been the drugs over there. I mean, it's just a, it's a hard, a way different culture and a harder yeah. life and, and some aspects of, of, of being more personalized. Like down in the South, we all care about each other. Yeah. We'll help anyone that yeah. like, I don't know why that is. Tennessee but, is the volunteer state for yeah, a reason. Yeah. And, and go out there and, and everyone's like, oh yeah, another person died. And they're just so numb to it. And and that was just really weird for me to like see with my own eyes, like people not caring that someone's fixing in their life. And yeah, they're like, the, Yeah, this happens every day. Yeah, you're a guy that writes about a lot of real shit and Oklahoma, there's grew up I've been to I've been to been to Tulsa, I've been to Stillwater, I've been to I think I've been to Norman. And then where else? You Ufala, Oklahoma, I think we went to, right? McElwain, Ufala, and then Goodwell. Goodwell had nothing around it. But <laughs> yeah. um 
But it just seems like the the guys and girls that come out of there, you guys have lots of stories to tell, and some of it's about the bad times, some yeah. of it's about the good times. But it seems like the 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 bad times and this this emotion. Because is it just because there's not a lot to do that you guys have the 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 time to think about these things and get into an emotional space, or what is it about Oklahoma that you have your style of stuff? You have Turnpike, you have. You have what what Ragweed did. You have um, Zach Bryan. Like, what is it about Oklahoma? I think there's a lot of good things that come from Oklahoma. We have great food. We got great people. The, the only thing is that through history, it's a sad state. Like Trail of Tears. Then all of a sudden, you know, you got the land run going on, and then the FBI was started. Like, have you seen Killer of the Flower Moon? No, I haven't seen that. What's that? I would read the book before the movie comes out with like Leonardo DiCaprio, Sturgill Simpson, and Jason Isbell. All oh, in the movie. shit. And it, it's, uh, you know, Native American history is just, you don't even, like, you could scratch the surface and you know it's just absolute terrible. But, like, if you really start digging, it, it gets worse and worse and worse. And, yeah. and that's what the state is. I mean, the government literally looked at the land and said, that's a good place to put them because it's, You've seen it. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's very little resources. And then, come to find out, there's oil. <laughs> well, what does the government do then? <laughs> you know, it's just an ongoing cycle, and it's still going on today. It's still the Wild West out there in Oklahoma. And it's it's just full of pain and suffering. And, you know, the Dust Bowl and everything else, it, it's, it's just constant depression man it, yeah. it really is and and there's a lot of great things that come out of oklahoma and and i think it's because that state is just like growing up in it there's like this energy there that is like this place ain't right yeah like there's just so much that has gone wrong and and i think it makes people a lot stronger whenever they know enough i guess about pain and they're able to you know learn from it yeah, and and the the climate there, it's it's really hot. You all get a shit ton of tornadoes. Yep, it's it's uh when it rains, it it can flood. Like you guys have, it's it's like you said, it's it's a tough place, but it makes you more resilient. It makes yes. you hungry. It it creates a character that you don't get in other places. Yeah, which is which is something that that I've I I see in you. I've I see that in in a lot of other in music people. You see that in in the culture of of the in the native culture that's there you have the mixture of of literally the the cowboy and the native culture yeah. together like for like for you what what was it like growing like do you have do you have some native in you or are you uh, like what what's your kind of background with all that stuff i don't know if if i'm i need to send in one of those tests i get this question all the time so i'm like mexican spanish and then the the Indian part is either Aztec or Inca, somewhere down there. So it's that it's native to yeah. lower lower part of North America or Central America. Yeah, and and um, maybe I got Cherokee or some something, something along the lines. I'm maybe, but uh, I, I kind of doubt it, and um, I don't know yet. I need to figure it out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that the whole like feeling of growing up there is like you got cowboys all around. I mean, that's all I did was farming and ranching, helping other farmers and and working construction. That's that's all I've ever you been around. Construction? Oh yeah. I was on a job site when I wouldn't, you know, shouldn't have been because of age. It seems like that's an ongoing thing with me is that I shouldn't be in places due to my age, but I somehow end up being there. How old were you on a construction site? Seventeen. If well, there's a couple other times where I was a little younger, but it wasn't like any terrible big jobs. It wasn't like like what what kind of shit were you doing? What what kind of construction? Uh, I was the grunt, so you know you pick up a shovel, <laughs> you just start digging. You just start digging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's all sorts of stuff. I I loved construction because you could look at it and it'd be done. You know, like the day's over and you're like, oh, I did that. Yeah. But this kind of music business is a little. No, it's definitely different it's not as tangible yeah and and doing that has helped me you know just know what an actual hard hard day of work is and then also just learn really bad habits of like what that lifestyle is it's like oh yeah we smoke cigarettes uh we eat gas station food and we run straight off of energy drinks that sounds like touring that sounds like what I did, what I've done in the music business yeah, the last four yeah, years. It's kind of that. Yeah, run yourself <laughs> ragged. You're still breathing. You're fine. And, and 
and doing that, and then also they, uh, I guess my first job was was doing partial construction and then uh, helping run the show cattle, and then also uh, just taking care of the rest of the ranch, and then got done there, started started working for. Um, well, basically, I view him as my second father. I've been raised with that family all my life and uh, started planting with him and then just worked that summer. And then after I quit college, I started farming and ranching with a, another farmer straight north of uh, Stillwater and worked there for about a year, almost, just doing that. And uh, I was lucky because he, he needed so much help and he'd still let me go and run off on the weekends and and go play shows and pursue your dream yeah he was like i think you can do it and then one day i was like i gotta go to nashville he's like heck of a deal why go have fun and then i was heck like heck of a deal why yeah and then <laughs> and then one month later i'm like hey uh i'm gonna have to quit this job <laughs> and he's like it's all right son you go get it <laughs> what was what was that guy's name uh doug will doug will yeah and what 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 does he how would you describe it like what does he Look like is he like just that classic old cowboy farm guy, or is he not as old as you're making him sound? Because I'm, I'm envisioning like Yosemite Sam, old, no, no, old, no, 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 old no, no. dude, being like, no, no, no. all right, boy. No, nah. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. He's got to be in his late fifties, early sixties. How'd you but, get? How'd you get linked up with him? Was it just? Was through? it? It was the other farmer, uh, Richard Pratt. <laughs> oh, so he ne- he knew that. that oh, yeah. this guy needed help. Yeah, because winter times, Richard doesn't need that much. He can all do it himself. Summer times, he's got plenty, but. Doug has a way bigger operation, and he needs constant help. So uh, I had plenty of things to do. There's there's never a time where it was like, well, what should I do now? It was like, oh, yeah, there's so many things. Yeah, and speaking and, of all the things that are farmed in Oklahoma, there's lots of states. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I call myself California sober. California sober? So I'm, 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 oh, I'm, okay, I'm okay. a smoker. Yeah. I, I had to quit drinking about, about um, that seven years ago, um, but the um, I still still smoke, and – I was blown away my first time going to going to tumbleweed, and the the folks loading in are like, "Hey, do you anybody in here? Anybody in here like four twenty friendly?" And I was like, "Me, me, me!" <laughs> and I did not realize how big of a crop hemp and marijuana are in Oklahoma. Oh yeah, because I guess because it's I guess it's legal to grow and like medically legal to buy, but it's like like people just have an abundance of it, and it's just. Tons of people growing pot everywhere. Oh yeah, no. As soon as they made it legal, it, I mean, just the the greenhouses start popping up everywhere, and then you know you get. I I, I probably shouldn't say this part, but I had friends that had uh, some folks just show up and be like, "I want to buy this property off of you," and they'll show up in duffel bags and a van full of people, and they have just straight up bought their house that day, and and it, I don't know, like. I think the government finally figured out we can make some money off of this deal yeah. by taxing it. And it was like, we might as well, you know? Yeah. And, and as soon as they did that, dispensaries were just popping up out of the ground. I mean, I think there was like 23 in Payne County, which is where Stillwater is. It was, and some of those aren't doing so well, you know, cause they're created so much competition and yeah. And it, yeah, just leveled out the playing field. But yeah, when it first started, it went crazy. Yeah, like you said, it's the Wild West. And yeah. it, it stays the Wild West because of different things that can introduce there. And one of the latest things is is marijuana. Yeah. It, that's there's it's like the gold rush back in the day. It's like <laughs> it's like when folks are moving out west. Now folks are moving to Oklahoma because they know they can grow there and have affordable living and yeah. do all that. Now has that has that like changed the culture out there, you think, for the for the better, or is it still Oklahoma? Still Oklahoma? It's still Oklahoma. Yeah, it's like, still. <laughs> like at first, everyone, you know, because it's it's the Bible Belt. They're like, man, I don't know about this. You know, this. <laughs> yeah, life goes on, and no one really cared. It was. I mean, honestly, it just feels better because half the time, you know, you, you get freaked out because you got a buddy in the back seat, and you're like. You're telling me you have how much on you? And and now it's like, oh, okay, you got your card. You're fine. And yeah. it, it just kind of eases everything. And yeah. it was a smart choice for Oklahoma. Yeah, there's worse and there's way worse substances that people yeah. could be doing than, than smoking some some green that Bobby Joe up the road yeah. is growing, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we have some good we have a good friend. Um I won't say his name, um, but um he's a good good friend of, of ours for being out there with Trey. And he makes these gummy bears. Um, God bless those gummy bears. Dude, we, we, we call them, 
we call them uh, we call them suicide bears because suicide. they 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 kill you. Like, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but like they they're they're like yay big, but they're like full spectrum. They're ninety milligrams and they're this big, the little baby guys, but they're ninety milligrams full spectrum. He he sells them to um to the dispensaries for for cancer level patients. Oh dang! But he'll if you go out if you're playing out there he'll he'll just hook it up. He'll hook it up and and he comes on the bus. He hangs out. He, he has a beer. He says what's up to the guys. I have him side stage during the show, like just off. Not a liability at all. He's just yeah. sitting there drinking cold beer. Wants to wants to smoke up or wants to be smoked up. My part is Trey's Trey's completely sober. He's full straight edge. Yeah. Like been had to get sober at nineteen. Was in into some shit. And he'll he'll what he'll, what he'll do is he'll he'll get the stuff and he'll he'll bring it bring it back with them and then you see people try these bears and they're like where is this from and i'm like it's from oklahoma and they'll say wait it's not from colorado or california this ain't gonna be that i'm like oh buddy you have no No. idea this is from oklahoma this is some of the best stuff you can possibly get like i mentioned oklahoma is one of my favorite legal states and it's not even fully legal just the the stuff that i've had from oklahoma is just i put it up there with anything so it's it's uh and it's affordable too yes illinois they they 40 percent on the dollar dude new york city doesn't even tax it that much we tax everything a shit ton (laughs) yeah no it is even yeah going to new york (laughs) I mean, I usually that don't talk about this just, thing, but no, dude, it just smells like weed now. Oh, New York yeah. City's just the sm- just the big weed cloud. That's what, the- <laughs> and it used to be like in certain neighborhoods it would be like that, but now it's legal, and the city's just like you're talking about with San Francisco. It's not quite at that level, but the yeah. city's a very different place right now than oh, yeah. it's been over the last 25, 30 years. Same thing with Philly. Same thing with Chicago. Same thing with Boston. A lot of those cities are just different places now. Yeah, and. And I think it's funny with New York City because I'd be walking on the sidewalk and my manager would bump me and he'd be like, look at that. And there's 10 beautiful college girls just walking by, like, look like supermodels. Well, yeah, fashion capital of the world, bro. Yeah. All the supermodels live, most of the supermodels live, international supermodels, they go to New York before they go to Miami or LA. Yeah, we if you're mad first. you can't see the sun, you know, because of the buildings, <laughs> I can tell you one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but then... I'll look over to my right, and there's two guys leaning up a parking meter, and they're shooting up heroin together. Yeah. And it's like, it's just, I don't know. It's like two different things. But it's at a the jungle. Same, yeah, but you don't feel unsafe, I guess, or at least in the parts that I've been. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, he's just doing his thing. Yeah, and then what time of the year were you guys there? Uh, I was actually just there two weeks ago. One okay, week ago. so right now is a good time to go. You wait another month or two. That heat, you know, you know, you saw all those trash bags on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so that those those trash bags don't get picked up any quicker. There's there's nine million people there. There's, yeah. There's there's a lot of trash to pick up. And it gets it gets it gets stacked, and that heat of the sun going down on the concrete with the trash just creates a scent and an odor that I can only describe as character building. Like we mm. talked about, Oklahoma yeah. builds character. New York City definitely builds character, and. Uh, where'd you guys stay when you were like you said you went to Times Square? Because I'm I'm interested because it's cool to hear you say that you loved New York City. Yeah, like yeah. I, I love that you like that. And there's people in the city that are really into the vibe of music that you're making. Like you go to Brooklyn, you go to the Village. But people don't realize that's where Shooter Jennings really started coming up out of. Like I did not know that. There's art. There's there's country artists that were in the the early days. Like I'm talking like early Americana scene, like Billy Block show Americana back in the day. New York City was one of the spots where that was really introduced, and it was within the hipster culture of the 80s and 90s and early 2000s in Brooklyn. I did so, not know that. Like there's venues in the city that do. The kind of country they're not they're not doing the bro country pop country stuff they live they'll do it like i saw dustin lynch at the at the playstation theater years ago right right on broadway but there's sections of the city that want to hear the real shit that want the emotion want Wyatt flores well it's because it's they know real shit yeah they see it every single day i mean people watching when you're surrounded in all those cultures you're gonna see real things it's not like you just get to live in one little spot. You know, like when you come from the middle of nowhere out in Oklahoma, you don't see so many walks of life. You're like, oh, yeah, I know this place, and it hasn't changed, and it probably won't change. You go out there, and you're going to see every walk of life. And you'll just the conversations that you can have out there. And 
it just opens your eyes. And it's like you get to have these connections with people just talking to them and you figure out where they're from. And if they're lucky, you know, if you're lucky enough, they'll tell you a little bit about where they come from or something or give you a story to go with. And and to be around that and to just be a sponge and soak all that in, you get to figure out how crazy life is besides just right there in small town, little Oklahoma. There's so much life to this world it is unbelievable yeah and, it, and you you really enjoy writing stories about that like the you'd say in the the people i've never heard a, a songwriter or, or an artist say and it makes so much sense now people watching and coming up for stories about these people and and putting it pen to paper and making it a song like that's a that's that explains a lot of of you think about like like the storytelling of people like Billy Joel and Paul Simon, New York guys from back in the 70s. They had to just yeah. be looking out their window and, and writing songs about people. And there it is. Let the imagination run. I mean, that's one way you can do it. Or, you you know, I'd write a whole bunch about life experiences. But yeah. at the same time, it's it's also fun to try and put yourself in someone yeah. else's shoes and just walk it. Yeah. How has co-writing been for you? Because I feel like, there's, like you said, there's not a lot of that. I mean, you... It sounds like you were involved in the music scene in Oklahoma to where you knew other guys and girls that were doing it, but you come out here and it's just songwriters for days. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm waiting for people to figure out that I don't write every single song by myself and I'm wondering what that's going to look like because you know, it's all the controversial thing of like, Oh, well if you got co-writers then you ain't a real songwriter. That's bullshit. Yeah. It's like, dude, I love writing with my friends because I, I have ADHD like no other. Same, bro. Same, yeah, yeah. Same, it's, it's bad. Same. Like sitting by myself, like I have to have something smack me. Like my feelings have to be smacked upside the head for me to go, there it is. And then it just comes to me. And that's usually how most of the songs I write by myself happen. But when it comes to co-writing, it's great because you get to learn how to write a song. You get to learn other ways that you can write a song. And it's it's the whole sponge thing. It's all I wanted to do when I got here was learn as much as I possibly could, as fast as I possibly could do it. And in co-writing is, is it's so eye opening in its own way of like, you'll have one person that writes a song like this and then you'll have another that goes, no, we're not going to do it that way. We'll do it this way. And, and, and the energy that can be built into a room, it, it's magical, like putting a whole bunch of heads together. But I also write differently. I don't walk into a room going, we need a number one hit. I walk in every single time going, what kind of art can we make? Yeah. And and that's been the funnest part for me. It's like, don't expect this song to just be, you know, the next friends in low places. It's like, we're not after that. We're here soul searching for something greater. And if people like it, great. Yeah. If they don't and we're, and we're confident in what we wrote, great. Yeah. You like, know, and songs can have so much life sitting in a catalog too. Like you think about some songs that have that have come out. I mean, you look at a guy like Chris Stapleton who spent years as a writer and there's still hundreds of Chris Stapleton songs that, that we don't would, know. That we have no idea that are sitting in a catalog that could be huge hits for someone. But oh, you just man. don't you just don't know. And the thing about um the co like cause I feel like that and you're coming you you coming to Nashville proves that times have changed within yeah. the, the red dirt scene and, and Nashville. Cause there's that video back in the day of, 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 uh, of ragweed singing, singing boys from Oklahoma and all those, all those guys like Wade Bowen and I forget oh, who yeah, else Randy was Rogers, Randy Rogers. And they hop up and one of the verses when one of the guys hopped up and, and sang was like singing, there was that rivalry of, of this is Texas and this is Nashville. And nowadays it, it's all so blended together, which is great in the way it probably should yeah. have always been to where you have folks out of the Texas scene that have their business based out of it. You have folks out of Oklahoma and Texas like yourself that have moved here fully and are still touring the scene. And then you have folks from Nashville, like my boy, Tyler Halverson going, yeah, yeah going, coming South Dakota to college here in Nashville to living, being a, being a, a staple of, of that East Nashville early or like this, this generation's Americana Western scene to move into a place in Texas with no cell service and learning how to play shows in Texas. There's, it's all so blended now. So it's like the perfect time for a guy like you to be coming up. In my opinion, it's been very difficult for like, because when you're raised that way, it's like you don't want Nashville. You know, that's the way Oklahoma and Texas have always been. And screw Nashville. That place is just dog water. This, that. I mean, they could talk shit on it all day. Yeah. But 
I was like, I'm going to go see for it myself. And there's parts of that. It depends what you come here looking for. But all that stuff about, oh, yeah, well, we appreciate our own songs around here, all that. And it's like, why are you telling? You're lying. You fly out to Nashville. Like, it, it baffles my mind the lies that get told. Yeah. And, and, you know, some people are going to hate me for it. But truthfully, it is a lie. Like, I've seen so many people that talk about it, and they're like, oh, yeah, screw Nashville and screw all those writers and everything else. It's all this. And then they're turning around and coming here. Yeah, and they're writing, just not telling and writing songs with the writers. <laughs> yes. It's like, <laughs> damn, and lied to my face, you know, and, and, uh, and that's always been the hardest thing for me to tell people. It's like, yeah, I went to Nashville, and I didn't go looking for a record deal or anything. I just came out here to learn. And be inspired. And be inspired. Yeah. Like it was never a goal of mine, you know, to show up and get on radio or anything like that. Like I've just been doing me. And it's been working. And it's been working. <laughs> but it, Which it, is beautiful. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, I'm very lucky. We all joke around about it in my team and it's like, we're not even supposed to be here. Like we're just lucky enough to get this opportunity and we're just living our best lives. But you know, it's 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 just weird how it all played out. Yeah. How was um you got to do uh calf fry this year? Mm. How was that for you as a as a Stillwater, Oklahoma area native? Uh the time slot we had this year uh worked out real well. Um usually the sun's just like blasting you in the eyes and it was cloudy <gasps> and rainy. And so that was one good thing, but uh it, it, it was definitely different this time. Uh you know, the first time that we played, we were you know, frantic. We were like, we, we got to build this show out and we got two weeks to do it. And it wasn't like I was using Nashville hot shots, you know, that just no songs like that. It was like, all right, we're going to piece some things together and build a show with whatever we have. And and we did it when we were all nervous and, and got through it this year. It was, it was way different. It was like, I can't wait for y'all to see this show. It's 10 times better than what you seen four months ago when I played here last time. It's, uh, it's more energetic. We kind of got our things figured out. The band's really coming to, becoming a unit. But on the fan spectrum of things, that's where it gets really weird. You got people in the crowd that either uh, love me because they're one of my friends or they hate me because they knew me as a kid and they're like, yeah, I hate this guy. He's just an <laughs> annoying little ADHD running around. Same. Same. Uh, yeah. Same. Yeah. Honestly, our life stories oh, are very yeah. similar in yeah. that regard. And then there's other people like, like we definitely pulled a bigger crowd that was our own. And that was so cool because I knew like there was people in the crowd that were actual fans and they didn't know who I was. They only knew my music. They never knew me personally and, and doing the fan interactions, like went out there and I didn't have much time before Caitlin Butts came on stage. But uh, the first person that walked up, the girl started bawling and I'm like, uh, you're all right, you know, like trying to help her out and then getting ripped away, you know, like we had to get go because it's rude. It's it's rude to be out there in the crowd while another artist is playing. Agreed, yep. Yeah, and so I, I got ripped away and, and then people were just grabbing onto me and I was like, okay, this is getting real if it's hitting the hometown like this because I know plenty of people in this town. It, it's just weird to see. Where you, where, where you're just Wyatt to them. You're not. Yeah. You're not this 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 artist that you, that these people that need that they need to meet and yeah. they need to get a picture with. You're just you're just Wyatt Flores. You're the same kid that you were 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And and then now it's like, oh, there's actual people in the crowd that are here because yeah. of the music. Have you headlined inside yet? Uh, no. Uh, I I, I don't know when we're gonna do that, dude. That is going to be a moment. We, uh, I think we sold a thousand tickets last time we were there. Me and old Cam Allen. Have you met Cam Allen? I have heard nothing but good things about that guy. Oh, he's great. I have heard from from our buddy Andrew, who's over at. Uh, I don't know if you know Andrew. Um, Andrew over at CAA. I Andrew, believe Dom, I've Dom, met Dom, Andrew. Domin and Johnny. I say, go ahead and try to say his last da name. Dom, yeah. Dom and Johnny. He's he's an Italian boy by Paisan. Um, He's um, a good friend of ours. He's from Pittsburgh, and um, he's over at CA. I remember him being – he's he's a guy that I talked to. Be, like, he's a really good buddy. Uh, I remember when he moved to town, and he's just busted his ass and started out as a – as an assistant and has risen up now to being an agent over at CAA. But one of the things that he would do is come to my round, come to Nikki T's round, go to little showcases at the basement. And he was, he's 
was very early on, very <laughs> early on you. He was like, dude, you got, we're looking at this white floor as a kid. I was like, bro, I, I met why <laughs> we exchanged phone numbers like last year at Tumbleweed. Um, but he's been telling me a lot about Cam Allen, like a guy that I need to have in my wheelhouse. Is he another Oklahoma kid? Yes. Uh, and him and his band are just absolutely phenomenal people and their music is really good. I mean, they're, they're knocking down the doors and they're getting after it. He's got just an amazing voice. I don't know. I don't know if you've gotten to listen to it or see one of his live shows. It's he's just an has an angel voice. Like it's like, how did this kid get so blessed with an amazing voice? It's like and you're and you're doing yeah, this. I got, shit, a, you're I got a bag of gravel back here just floating around. Oh yeah, it, it, it's 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 awesome to see all of us Oklahomans just kind of making it. Like J.R. Carroll started out with yeah. him. And yep. Heck, I had a phone call with him yesterday of just. Isn't it crazy that we started from a lawn chair sitting around playing guitars when you were just 21 years old and I was fixing to turn 19 and and sitting down in lawn chairs and playing guitars until, you know, three in the morning. And we always talked about making it and we played all those shitty bar gigs together. And now we can both say that we're happily living the dream. Like, it's just wild. And you're still just getting started. Still just getting started. Yeah. But to have it all come up together and it's... It's cool to hear you say that because, like, I talk about I've talked about it on here a bunch. Like, when people move to Nashville and other you meet other guys and girls that move here around the same time, it's like kind of like your your class almost. But you guys have that within the the Oklahoma Red Dirt scene as well yeah. of guys and girls that get started. Like, you look at at back in the day with the the Co Wetzel Parker McCollum. Those guys people don't realize those two used to used to tour together. Oh yeah. In a van or in a car for the, they did that shit for years, you know. And you look at look at like like the the generation that's come after that with like Pecos and Colby and um, and Dylan Wheeler and people like that. But now there's this this resurgence of folks, kids out of Oklahoma and kids a little bit further up north, out of South Dakota, out of Idaho, out of Washington. Like there's just this Western movement going on right now. Yeah. And it's like Western mixed with a little bit of rock, mixed with some elements of two thousands country. Like it's, it's such a <laughs> such a cool blend of shit that you kids are all creating. Like how old are you? You're what? Uh, twenty one. Yeah, you're a fucking baby. I'm twenty. I'm I'm I'm. You're get the damn baby. There's all these all these kids coming up right now. There's there's under there's a group of of folks, and it's all different styles of within the country spectrum. That are like 23, 24 and under. That are just about to, they're just kick, you guys are just kicking the door down. It's just this, a new era, man. It's weird. It's exciting. It, it's exciting, but like it's weird for me to just like be a part of it. Like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I'm in that circle. Or, you know, like you, I, you look up at the red dirt stuff and you see all those guys and you're like, those were the godfathers of red dirt. And it's like, what era am I being a part of right now? Because I, I guess I'm a, like, it's just mind blowing for me. Well, well, the way I kind of describe it, and I've, I've, I'm going to probably do like a video on it. So I'm uh, like doing the Razor Rowdy thing. We're doing a lot more like personality stuff and, yeah. and whatnot. And I used to be a radio DJ. That's how I got my start was being a radio, country radio DJ in New Jersey. Heck yeah. That's how I got my start and then moved down here and all that. Um, but the way I've kind of looked like stepping back and looking at it, it's like you look at like the 80s and 90s, like the transition of rock. You have like hair metal, like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Then you get into grunge, and it's yeah. people singing about like very emotional shit. There's still the drugs and the rock and roll, probably still the sex too in some <laughs> yeah. regard, but it's it's not this like glamorous thing. It's singing. Yeah. It's the the other end of that spectrum, and it's huge when you when you go from from Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and, and White Snake to Nirvana and Alice in Chains and and freaking like like Pearl Jam and, and that style. Yeah. And I feel like country music's going through that right, right now. now. <laughs> I feel like it's the end of the bro country era. It's the end of 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 Daisy Dukes and and tailgates and and beer and singing about the happiness that's in the country lifestyle. And there is yeah. a lot of happiness. There's there a lot is. of cool stuff about growing up small town. There yeah. is. But there's a lot of bad stuff about growing up small town too. And there's a lot of emotion and people have been through a lot of shit, especially over the last few years coming out of the pandemic and different things going on with, with society and whatever. And you have folks singing about real shit and that's what it seems like what you're doing. It's, it's definitely like for me, I feel like after COVID hit, 
That's when people like woke up and was like, I'm not okay. Like, this is not okay. This is not a, a way to uh, fake happiness. You know, you can only do it for so long. And I, I really feel like the COVID had a huge impact on how people view the world and and got in touch with themselves and it's like oh yeah life is not all happy yeah and i can't just be listening to the white noise or that's coming through this radio right now like i need something that actually tells me what's going on in my life and i need something to connect to yeah and you see it and you see it in pop with like the with the sad stuff that comes out of that with with the billy eilishes of the world and that and then you've you've got this 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 sad boy farm emo like just (laughs) just angsty this is how we feel we're we're gonna cuss we might not have the the quote-unquote best country voice but it's gonna be something distinct when when you hear zach bryan saying you know it's zach fucking oh yeah when you hear wyatt flores sing when you hear tyler halverson sing when you when you hear sam barber sing when you hear colby acuff like there's you know it you know it it's distinct as fuck and it's (laughs) and it's real stuff it's not you can't like like that famous video. I think it was Grady Grady Smith that did it back in the day. That famous video where they took all the songs and put it over the one beat. That you ever see that? Uh uh-uh. uh. What well, was the snap tracks? Was that Grady Matt? Yeah. That was Grady. So all it was it was I forget what year it was. It had to be like 2014. Dude, that's that's oh yeah that's like 2015. 2015. Like so that. they took like he took like all a bunch of number ones from that year, and you could put it over the same snap track. And it was and it was like all this, but it, but I mean it makes yeah. sense. It was the same group of guys writing them, the same group of guys producing them. So it makes sense. It's yeah. a sound. It's it's an era. FGL had created a created an era and a sound, but that that era just seems and it's still there. We, yeah. we have we have we know guys and girls that are in that pop vein that, that we love and are doing art and doing it their way, but there's just this this feeling of like. What like Charles Wesley Godwin, mm. for example, I and mean, you've gotten to do some shows with him, right? Fixing to fixing to I, 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 two week run in California with him. That's gonna be so fucking oh, you cool. Have no idea. And who would have thought a, a small town guy from West Virginia from the Holler with a small town guy from literally one of the smallest towns you can come from <laughs> outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma, together on the West Coast? Yeah, playing. I would assume that those tickets are probably moving. It's probably close to sold out if it isn't already. I haven't checked it, but because well, Charles is Charles moving, is moving tickets in. And you've got a, you've already been out on the West Coast, so you've been to some of the places that you're going. But it's there's and you you see it with girls too. Like there's there's some females that are coming up that have that kind of sad sound yeah. as well. Even on the pop spectrum, like Meg Maroney's singing about sad shit. The girl in the mirror. Yeah. That's a fucking real ass oh. song. And she, we've had we've had her on the pod, and, our, and it's there's just this this cool thing going on with with you guys and girls that are especially like i said the the 24 25 and under and i'm really excited to see where it where it's at five can you imagine where it's six months from now but yeah like five years from now where the scene is at it's uh i'm wondering if it'll if it'll do something to where we push the limits so far and in 10 years it changes again you know like like everything has its movement. You have the '90s, you got the 2000s, and then the 2010s. You know, or teens, I guess. I don't. I don't know how. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. However you want to do that, but 20, 2010s, yeah, 2010s, 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 2010s. <laughs> and 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 I definitely think there will be another movement. I feel like there's going to be this movement that happens for the next ten years, and then at some point we're going to push a limit to where it's like, all right, times aren't as bad anymore. We still love these songs. We're still going to take some of these with us, but now it's time for the new movement, and it'll be you know happier songs. I just, I just hope that it doesn't fall in the same pocket of you know the snap tracks thing because that is so true. It really is. It is like we still need those happy songs. Like I love like uh, Keith Urban's like early Bro. early stuff. Like uh, what is that song? Or the Black Love somebody like you, dude. Yeah, I was listening so. My uh, my girlfriend, she's a few years older than me. She's thirty five, and she was playing some like old Keith Urban. But did you know Keith Urban was in a was like a frontman in a band? No kidding. Yeah. So I forget what it was called. Mac well, again showing his age. He's over thirty two. He's old. He's old motherfucker. <laughs> uh, they, they're in their twenties like us. I'll, I'll, I'll be thirty three here coming yeah. up. Yeah, he was. What was the? You remember what the band was called? Mac I don't remember the band, but I remember. Um, he had I remember some hits. they did. Um, so he got his start. It's weird we're talking about this because the guy we had on <laughs> Trey's podcast yesterday, he, he his big inspiration is uh, yeah, Peyton, Keith Urban. Peyton Smith, right? Yeah. yeah. 
He, uh, but no, Keith got discovered playing in a bar band from Brooks and Dunn. Um, I think it uh, kicks Brooks. Sat on the floor and watched Keith play. At I, I want to say it was in Oklahoma, actually. Yeah, might have been. Might have been in Oklahoma. Imagine it was at it was at Canes or something. Oh, that'd be very man. much. That'd be that'd be very. So it, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild to hear. Um, I, I did. I did have a question. So. Like, uh, you've got sweet boy. <laughs> you've got a still slightly buzzed, definitely hungover <laughs> Matt Mack when asked you a question. What floors? That's a big accomplishment. <laughs> All right, no. question from the studio like audience. Was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, I always come into these things. I, I was talking to somebody last night. I was like, I, I, I ran into you several times. Uh, I think you're here in town. And I, I want to say we've, we've also met in Oklahoma at one point. Um, where, like, when you, when you, when you talk about the the snap track thing and you're talking about this new era of, of stuff that's coming, like there's always these um, different classes of like the next thing that's coming. I think it's just a wild west at this point, and it's yeah. like it's like where where do you see the next? I I don't I don't like I see it just going from uh, the from what it was to now. It's like everybody's doing this like. It, do, it doesn't matter anymore type deal. It's like, because, like, Meg Maroney, like, I mean, hell, we we talked about her, and, like, it's, um, damn, I'm going on a rant on this. But, oh, uh, sweet boy. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is uh, I know how to ask a question. <laughs> it's I, I get long, to spit. I, I, get, I, get, I, I, get, I get long-winded. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, we're, but yeah, what? Like, there's no boundaries. I'm with you, McElwain. There's and I no... think that represents a lot of the way things are now. Like, yeah. if you really want to think about it, the attention span that my generation has is so low that it's come to the point where it's like you have to have all these options. You need that. That's why this this new scene. Like, you got Evan Honer. He's doing like the folk John Prine thing, but he's from the California region and he has a different style that he plays. And then you got, you know, the Cole Chaney's of the world that are doing that bluegrass. Well, well, William Beckman, another traditional kind of sounding guy. Sounds like the old, the, the original Hank Williams. Yeah. And it, you have all these options. I mean, freaking 49 Winchester, one of my I favorite fucking bands. fucking love those guys. Honky Tonk is all get out. Like, it, it's it's amazing what we can hey. like all the things that you have there's now. a kid i want to i want you to look up he played all around the other the other day so what i've been doing with these with these rounds and stuff is i like to have i like to stick kids together that i think would sound cool together and vibe yeah. with each other that especially ones that are new to town so like we had um the other day we had um on tuesday we i put um three three kids together only one of one of them lives in town his name's aiden canfield he just moved here aiden's a good friend you know Aiden? Yeah. So Aiden's a really good friend of mine. He's become like like a little brother figure because him and I are both from New York. And we're he's like, wait a second, you're from New York? I'm like, yeah, dude. We grew up 15 minutes apart from each other. No kidding. Right outside New York City in the suburbs. <laughs> and like they it's so I had him play. He moved here on Monday. And then there's two kids, Preston Duffy, traditional sounding kid, um, not quite in the same in that in that lane that we're talking about, but Writing some, writing some real, some real shit. You know, not not as much the 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 stereotypical commercial stuff from South Carolina. There's this other kid, Landon Smith. Hold on, yeah. this name has been brought to my attention multiple yes. times. Yes, uh, Landon Smith. I have not heard his music. I have Bro. someone in my marketing team. This dude is wild. Dude, he he um. Is he 19 years old? Yeah, he's 19. Yes, I know exactly yeah, he, what you're talking about. He fucking um the other day. He has a song called If You Want Me Tonight that is already coming up on 2 million streams on Spotify. Jesus. 19 years old, going to the school. He's from Georgia. So you have this sound. You have Aiden doing this. You have, like, the Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. to me, is where it kind of came out of. Like, where is, like, Sam Barber's from California, right? I think he's, he's from a, Missouri. Oh, he's from Missouri. Originally, which originally. And then he moved to Montana. Oh, Mont okay, so he's that, that kind of Midwest thing, too. Then you have, like... What what Turnpike was doing? You have Zach. You have yourself. You have the the folks. You have Cam. You have the folks coming out of Oklahoma, like that Oklahoma Texas. Then you have Aiden kind of doing it where it's like a New York kind of. Style. You you yeah. feel the elements of a Bruce Springsteen song mixed mm -hmm. with this new wave of country stuff. 
Then you have this Landon Smith kid from Statesboro, Georgia, which Statesboro, Georgia, I hope you get to go down there one day. Definitely a different vibe from what you're used to. But to me, it's like you can't – it's where Luke Bryan got his start, where Cole Swindell got his start, where Dang. Dallas Davidson – that whole era of what country has been the last 15 years – came out of that little section. It's where Dylan Marlowe's hometown, Brian Fuller, Trey Landon, and the list goes on and on of the South Georgia guys and girls that have been coming out of there. And that's where this Landon kid is from. But Landon is singing songs like yours, like Zach's, like Sam's. Deep like cut. Aiden. Deep cut. He's, he's cussing. He's singing songs about being in a in a either he's physically intoxicated or mentally he's just fucked up over something. And he's he's singing it the real way he's yeah he's writing the shit like how you're writing it. it's but it's cool to see that it's not just a regional thing out of red dirt country anymore no. it's coming out of 15 minutes outside of new york city <laughs> it's coming out of south georgia the the former capital of the bro country movement which is why i think it, it really is yeah. here to stay because all sections of the country are being inspired by it yeah. And it's all young kids coming out of COVID. And we're all riding the wave. That's the weird part is that it, we're all this young. Like, it's not like, a, oh, a couple of us. Like, he's 19. So is Sam Bart. Well, not anymore. He just had his birthday. But like, <laughs> happy birthday, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but like, how crazy is that? That the, we're all this young. And to be writing songs on this level is is something else, too. You know, you know who else is really young, but doing it on a, on a commercial scale. But it's, again, sad kind of real shit. Look, you can't, you can't talk about all this without talking about Bailey Zimmerman. Yeah. Say, rocking a heart. Like, that's, He's, that's real shit. It is. Not, and his voice is not, you know, the, the, the regular. Yeah, it's not the regular. It's distinct and different. You feel the emotion in it. And he grew up in a, in a small town up in Illinois and was, was working, in, working on like an oil rig. And that know? is an amazing story that he has. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I just did it one time. Yeah, his, fir <laughs> his first time ever playing in front of people was a Ray's Rowdy event. It was at Live Oak. He wasn't even living here yet. We had, him play, we had him play a writer's round. That was his first. Um, Sean, um, Austin Sean played guitar for him, his producer. Like he, didn't even, he didn't even know how to play guitar. He just learned it. It's just, it's so cool to see that you can do it that organic way. Yeah. Like, because you started organic and then you found a group of guys that believe in you that can be your, your quote unquote suits, but they're not yeah. really suits because yeah. they're your boys. They're guys that believe in you. Yeah. Like That's how we did it. I mean, how'd you meet the? How'd you meet those? How'd you meet um those two guys? Uh, wait, which ones exactly? I'm talking about um Tyler and uh, Braden. Braden, yeah. All right, so Braden had already been working with Tyler and OEG, and uh, and they already had three other artists at the time, and I had actually met Caitlin and Tyler for the first time in January of 2021 at Tumbleweed. I, we weren't supposed to be playing there. We were supposed to be in like Alva, Oklahoma for some uh, music deal. And then it ended up getting rained out. So they moved it to the, the small, uh, I forget what they call it, but it was the small little uh, stage in the back. Yeah. And uh, I sat right next uh, to the right of Caitlin, did a writer's round. And, um, and that's when I first met him. But then Carrie had never heard of me either the night before. I was in there uh, drinking under the age, and I had the courage <laughs> to yeah, I had the courage to go up to him and be like, "Man, I'd really love to play here. What do I have to do?" He told me all that stuff. Then the next day, I'm playing there, and I was like, "Man, this worked out great." <laughs> but uh, he was texting Tyler, and he's like, "You need to get this kid while you still can," and uh, and so the conversation started. But I didn't have anyone helping me with anything. Like it was just me, little old me. I set my own gear up. I knew everything about that, and. I'd play for four hours just by myself, having the time of my life. And singing, singing every Red Dirt song that you do. Yeah, yeah. Singing every song that I could possibly learn. And he he goes, hey, we need you to come down here. Let's, uh, let's have you and Caitlin do a show together. And I showed up like 45 minutes late because he and, told and me. And this is Caitlin who? Caitlin Killian. Caitlin Killian. Which is okay. also a roommate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'll never forget that because I didn't know what load in was. I was like, yeah, screw all that, man. Like, <laughs> I, I can set up my stuff 10 minutes before I'm supposed to start playing, and I'll be fine. Bar band style, yeah, baby. Yeah, there ain't no time for that. Yeah, <laughs> and and so, yeah, I almost lost, like, 
I probably was about this close to not being able to uh, be a part of this team just because I was showing up late all the time. And I was like, dude, I don't know what you want from me. This show starts at like six. Why do you want me here at four? Like it's an <laughs> yeah. acoustic gig. Either way, uh, met with them, and then they were like, let's do a test trial. We'll do three months, see how things work. Three months goes by. I just started calling him my manager, and then we never talked about it again. And then uh, just been more- – yeah, been with those guys, and then we we all moved here to Nashville. Uh, I still had no money, um, and so I just lived in the apartment uh, with Tyler, my manager, and then I shared a room with my guitar player and producer, Austin Yankunas, and uh, just moved out of there in April. Where was that apartment at? Uh, that would have been uh, down in Brentwood. The, okay. The landings of Brentwood apartment. Hey, Brenniak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where are you at now? Uh, still in Brentwood, but now we're in a a big old house. But we're sharing it with. I think there's five of us in there. Okay. Maybe. But it's all create. It's all people in music. So it's it's manager, still the guitar player, producer Austin. Then you got Caitlin Killian, and then you got Andrew Sevner and me. Dude. That's awesome. I love when 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 folks live like music folks live together because it's just like a creative house. It's a creative house and it's also just personal growth all the way across. Yeah. It's like how do we build each other up and 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 help each and every single one of us succeed. Yeah. yeah. I I saw that recently with with uh with Trey when I first met Trey Lewis. I mean, he since he's been in Nashville pretty much he's been living with Ella Langley, his roommate, yeah. who Killing it and yeah. doing another thing, and then up until they recently moved into this this new house in Hermitage that they're at, it was the two of them, and then Joy Beth Taylor, phenomenal songwriter, and fellow Alabama for a person, and then uh, Matt McKinney, who's a yeah. killer songwriter. So you had you had four just creative friends living together, and like you said, it's the personal growth thing where you guys all moved here together, and you guys are all coming up together yeah. and doing it, and it's it. That, that creative energy just keeps you rolling and keeps you inspired and keeps you going. And especially for all of us coming, you know, Andrew's from Texas, but for the most part, we're all from that area. So when we all showed up together, it was like, it's us against the world. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, it's been that energy, but now it's, it's, it's not like we're trying to step on toes and everything to no, get to the top of just, the ladder. It's oh. just like, we got each other. Yeah. We got to make this work for ourselves. Yeah. And, and now it's just been a fun family like truthfully, like everyone's like, this is music business, not music friends. And it's like, yeah, but there, you can also have a great person, no, you know, it, personal relationship with people. If you, if, if you're a great person, you'll find other great people yes. to work with. And then it's going to work. You have a much better shot being a good person <laughs> yeah. and doing it with your friends and to where it's work and it'll feel like work at times. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're doing something you fucking love with other people, other people. That, that you happen to love that are your that are your closest homies. And I love I love that for you, man. And I love seeing what you and your team are building. And I can't wait to see what's coming now. We're kind of getting to that midway point of this year. You've had a lot of shows under your belt. Um, you've got the Charles tour coming up. When does that start? Oh man, see you remember me talking about not looking at yeah, tw- yeah master tour. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think it starts maybe the 10th of July somewhere okay. in there. Do you have stuff before that? Yeah, I think I'll be up in Chicago and stuff with a uh, 49 the weekend Bro, before. Is that at Joe's on Weed? I have no idea. It's see- probably at Joe's on Weed or Joe's Live. Chicago. Have you been to Chicago? No. Chicago is fucking awesome especially this time of year heck yeah you go in the summer bro when it's warm and not windy with a foot of snow chicago is awesome oh, uh, one, of, yeah. one of my favorite cities and one of the cities i was most surprised about with country music they fucking love it no they're shit gonna, they're gonna eat it up bro well, and, the, yeah. and the red dirt scene does so well up there like there's a huge red dirt market to where <laughs> turnpike and all those guys i mean even going back to to um to ragweed and wade bowen and randy rogers and casey donahue i mean there's that's your chicago is a an awesome place you're gonna love it i recommend going to portillo's 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 it's a place where sandwich really good sandwiches call them beef sandwiches just roast beef on a sandwich (laughs) and they get it wet so it's already dipped in like the dip so it's like and then they have big get a big piece of chocolate cake there (laughs) they also have chocolate cake shakes bro and they have dispensaries everywhere, but they're expensive. Chicago, <laughs> yeah. lower your weed prices, please. Yeah, you do that just take that tax. Yeah, oh, oh, and drink some Malort. 
I'm a, I'm Lord. gonna have to write this down. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll text it to you. Oh, thank you. I'll text it to you. I'll give I'll give you a little little itinerary. Chicago and with the forty nine guys, that'll be awesome. Oh yeah. If you, and if you're at Joe's on Weed, they hook it up really well with hospitality. Um, our buddy um, Ed Warm actually is the guy that owns that. Because no he had a tour manager the last few years. I've gotten <laughs> to know everybody all over the country with doing the shows and stuff. But um, yeah, Chicago, one of my favorite spots. And then I'm guessing off of Chicago, you're probably doing what like Michigan, uh, yeah, I Indiana. Think- uh, I'm trying to or remember. Wisconsin. Are you going to Milwaukee? Are you going to Milwaukee? Uh, yeah. Are you going to the? Is it the Rave Eagles th- Club? It's got to be. The I rave. think it's. Have you? Uh, it's with Charlie Crockett. I'd yeah, it's got uh, probably the Rave. I think Charlie's. Oh man, I try not to look at it because okay. it like it, it like, overwhelms sh- you. Oh yeah, because it's like, oh man, we got a lot of things to accomplish. It's like I just, I'm just, I just get in the van when I'm told to. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you go up to Milwaukee, that's the um. That, have you heard of that place, the Rave Eagles Club? Uh-uh. Okay, so it's legendary. legendary. Um, it's it's a place where we've I've I've talked about this. I talk about the same venues on here all the time. Mac wins. Like I've heard about this place, but I haven't been yet. I was um, say we hadn't been there yet. Yeah, you he hasn't <laughs> been there yet. I've I've been there. I've been there when I was out with um, Gary and Charlie from Muscadine. Um, it's a building that has four or five venues in it. So it's like you go in. Oh, no, it's kidding. an old. Um, like how you have like the Elks Club or like the Moose Club and stuff. Yeah. So the Eagles Club was like a like a high society thing back in the early days, like in like the twenties or teens or whatever, uh, like way back. And they basically upstairs there's a big ballroom holds about four or five thousand people. Then downstairs on the on the main level there's a there's like a bar room that holds probably about three fifty four hundred. That was where I was at with Muscadine. Behind that there's a club level one that holds about seven fifty eight hundred. You go down, you go downstairs. There's another one that used to be the bowling alley in the um in this 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 Eagles like society rich people's club that holds probably I think like eight hundred to a thousand. So you have all that, but the wildest part about it, it is one of the most haunted venues in the country. And you're a guy that's vibey, Uh-oh. and and you you, I think you're gonna you're gonna yeah. definitely get some vibes in in that room if that's where you guys are going. Which I think if, I would imagine if you're out with I Charlie, I would imagine that you're there. Um, in one of those one of those spaces, um, which Charlie Crockett's awesome by the way. I haven't had the chance to meet him, but I'm a big fan of what he does, and that's a, that's a really cool. Oh, I'm excited. Really cool opening out. slot for you. But downstairs is that that famous pool. There's a there's a, an old pool, so you go down a few levels of stairs, and they'll take you on on a tour of yeah. the building of like the ghost tour of the building. That's like part of the um, part of the hospitality they do, and um, there's the the haunted pool with the ghosts and stuff, and they have like right before Mac Miller had passed away, Mac Miller played there and he wrote, he signed his name on the pool and he wrote, um, I'm Mac, I, um, I'm Mac Miller. I was once alive. Now I'm dead. I sold this bitch out like the ballroom upstairs. I've sold this bitch out four times. And he wrote like something else and then signed it. And like shortly after that, he passed away. And they, I'm they, not gonna so, write that so, down. No, no, you don't. You don't, you don't have to write that. You don't have to write that. But he like plex. They like plexiglassed it, and the the acoustics. If you go down in the pool and you sing, like I forget who was just, somebody. I mean, Cameron Marlowe just did. Cameron, it, yeah. Was, yeah, Cameron was just there. Um, I think Meg Maroney was there recently. There's a lot of. That's a, a huge country market. But what's wild is, you'll be doing your show on one of the club levels, or maybe you guys are up in the ballroom. Who knows? But there'll be other shows going on at the same time. So they'll have one room going, and then like when I was there in Muscadine, we were downstairs. You ever heard of Galantis? Mm-mm. That is, so it's like a uns uns like oh, European yeah. like EDM like <laughs> DJ. So that was going on upstairs with like five thousand drunk college kids. We were downstairs in the in the in the smaller room with like four hundred like packed Muscadine fans, and we're loading out of this place. And you look up, and it's just college kids just dangling out the windows of this ballroom, just crazy shit. And to make it even wilder, <laughs> across the street is you're familiar with all the Jeffrey Dahmer shit. Yeah. So he's from the Milwaukee, oh, no. Wisconsin. That hotel no. across the street was uh, one of his spots. Okay, hold on. That was where he I, did his shit. It, this is where we're going. I'm pretty sure because I can't remember who in my band was talking about it, but they're like, "Yeah, we'll be right next to the hotel." Yep, yep. That's that's where you're going. Yeah, that's it. And <laughs> there used to be. I think there still are. I didn't. I didn't do the. I didn't do the full Jeffrey Dahmer experience, but there's like apparently tunnels underneath where you can get from the Eagles Club to the hotel, like under the street. Oh shit! Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a vibe, bro. The mid then the Midwest fucks the upper Midwest specifically. Like, 
like you talk about like Milwaukee, Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, Indianapolis, Chicago. Uh, they're great cities for country music. Like those are some of my favorite clubs in the country to go along with Tumbleweed, of course, and and go along with Canes and and. Thank you. You've got a lot of fun shit ahead of you, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. so excited for you. I'm jealous almost <laughs> that, that, you, that you're that you getting to experience all this stuff for the first time because it, it's so much fun getting to see the country and to do it with a team that believes in you and that you believe in and you have that us against the world <laughs> mentality. Because that's how it was when I was with, when I was with Muscular and that's how it was the early days with yeah. Trey coming out of Dick Down in Dallas. Like, you, you're going out there and it's it's a unit it's like playing playing a sport and yeah. fucking like coming up in like middle school or high school and you're going out with your team across the country playing in tournaments or something like you're playing travel ball or something but you're but you're getting to play music in front of people that want to hear it yeah in front of and get to open for How artists wild is that dude it's crazy <laughs> and this is life this is work yeah. you're not you're not you're not dogging it in 100 degree <laughs> middle Oklahoma heat on a yeah. farm anymore. You're not, you're not doing the construction gigs and, and doing all that. And by doing that, it makes all this worth that yes. much more to you. So dude, I'm super excited for you. Super well, stoked. Thank you. Any word on, on new music coming? Uh, all right. I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, the next song coming out, uh, I believe it's coming out June 9th. Okay. Is, uh, Holes, which is a song that I wrote back in March and it, it's all about being broke. And, uh, and yeah, I'm I'm very excited. It's one of the most personalized songs towards me and and where I come from and and the generations of my family. So, I'm very excited to be releasing that song. I've been holding it for way too long. Well, maybe you putting out that song will inspire crazy ass Shia LaBeouf to make a new Holes movie, <laughs> and you'll be the damn soundtrack. We'll get we'll get we'll get we'll get the label team on on the sync on that one, and we'll inspire that. And you could be the, the movie soundtrack of the major motion Dude, picture. That would of be holes, awesome. Holes, whatever number it is, I think it'd be Holes two, right? It'd be two. They, or three. I don't think. Wait, they made a second one. Did they make a second one, Matt? Uh, no, they, they, uh, turn your mic on. Turn your mic on, McElwain. Turn your mic on. There you go. Yeah, if they do, if they do this, it'll be it'll be a holes two. Okay, okay. Holes, holes two. We need you. Why Flores has your soundtrack. Holes two. We're ready for you. Shut up. Uh, he needs that paycheck. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Hey, hey. <laughs> It gets expensive out there in Brentwood. Um, but, uh, but, bro, where, where can people go to find you on all the socials and shit? Uh, uh, socials, just look up official Wyatt Flores, and then I swear, if you look up Flores at all, you'll see my goofy ass on there somewhere. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on and hanging. Um, like I said, it's full circle. Like, yeah. getting to, literally meeting you your first time playing at – your first time doing like one of those opening slots for for Carrie and the crew at Tumbleweed to to now you're you're a, you're a rising actor your name people are knowing in the country music scene and I can't wait to watch you continue to grow. Well, and, thank you, brother, and super stoked <laughs> to have you as a as a part of the the outside the round <laughs> rowdy family now, bro. Heck it's, yeah. it's it's cool to have you have you. I know we talked about doing it for a while, so glad. Well, we thank can make you it so work. much for having me, man, brother. Absolutely, dude. we'll do we'll do it we'll do it again oh, soon. Heck yeah. We'll do it we'll do it again sometime. <laughs> uh, Y'all be sure to check out our boy Wyatt Flores. Uh, he's going on the road with all kinds of folks all over the country. Uh, so y'all be sure to go and uh, visit. It's whiteflores.com, I'm assuming, right? Uh, the website? Whiteflores.music.com. Whiteflores.music.com. <laughs> Y'all be sure to go check that out. Uh, get some tickets. And when you're at the shows, say hey to Wyatt and buy some fucking merch. Because the merch is a huge way to support these guys and girls that we have on this show and uh, folks that are rising up in this country music thing. Um, also, shout out to our sponsors. Of course, we got our friends from Big Friendly Productions. We have our friends from Whale Tail Media, Saxman Studios, and our boy Mitch Wallace with the Digital Marketing Agency. Uh, for more information on what we do here at Outside the Round, y'all visit RaiseRowdy.com. For Sweet Boy Behind the Camera, my boy Wyatt Flores, my name is Matt Brill, and this has been Outside the Round. I ain't never been the kind for staying one place for too long. Been the best at saying I love you to a girl I love. Only got a couple tricks on my sleeve. They usually just make.